The importance of the seine fishery is illustrated quite vividly in what it meant to the population of the town. It demanded a great workforce if and when fish were available. In August, that was the commencement of the seinen season. August month, in the local paper, there would be a notice to say that a meeting of the Seiners Commission was going to be drawn up for the boats to register and to be allotted their place for the season. To start with, they would take on Seiners, and these were taken on with what was called the shipping shilling. You would accept the shilling, and that would bind you to that company for the rest of the season. There was also another class of man, which was called the blouser. The seiner was the man who was going to be afloat. The blouser was the man who worked ashore. Now, the blouser never had a wage, but he used to have what was called an allowance. When his seine net was going to be carried from the loft down to the boat, it would take between 35 and 40 men to carry it. Now, if they had taken on 20 seiners, they would want another 20 men. So in the wings, they generally had 20 blousers. And what they would do with them was, they would pay them perhaps half a crown each. But the seiners, they did it for their 11 shillings. There were three types of boat used. There was the seine boat, that was specially designed to carry the seine. And then there were the dipper boats, which equally were specially designed to carry the fish. These are boats 40 foot in length and they can carry in the region of 36 hogsheads of fish, which is 36 fifths of a ton. There was also another boat called either a lurker or a follier. The names really imply what they were. The lurker was really lurking, waiting for action. And if it was the follier, the follier was following the fish and what was going on. It was usually that the master seiner was in the follower. He could go to wherever was happening quickly and give instructions on the sea. Now the master seiner, strangely enough, more than often was not a fisherman. He was a tradesman from ashore, but he would be taken on as soon as the cry of heather was made. And there is a story about one master seiner who was a mason and that he was up the cemetery building a brick grave and the cry of heather was made and he dropped tools and went. Now whether the funeral was going to be the next day or no, I don't know, but uh, that will give you the urgency of the call. Now the women at that time mostly had big families. So when the seining season began, they would sign up for work in the cellar and they would accept a shipping shilling as well. Now, as soon as they heard the cry of heaven, they knew that they was going to be needed. Because as soon as that first gurry of fish hit the cellar floor, they had to be there. And they brought their eldest daughters with them as well. They were salt maidens. They used to carry the salt to them in pails. And they would be working there up to 12 hours a day. It was back-breaking work, as you can imagine, when they were bulking the fish. There are three reasons why we don't have fishing on the shore now. I suppose the principal one really is that we've lost mining now that would draw the fish in. But even if we did have mining and all those minerals going in the water, you wouldn't have fishing on the shore. For the simple reason is that the demise really of the big pilchard fishery was with the advent of the steam engine. When you had a sailing boat just cutting through the water, it was said that you could see the pilchards going away from the bow of the boat. When you have vibration, the pilchard is one of the timidest fish going. You only got to make a sound and they're gone. So you can imagine what the thump, thump, thump of that was. Timid fish. Now, could you imagine fish coming in shoal now with speed boats, with fishing boats, with everything going on around harbors and in air bay like it is? You would never have them again. Never had them again. 
We come now to the 21st century. We've considered the pilchard right down through the ages. Now the pilchard is still in the sea, they're swimming in mass, and they're still being sought. And I suppose it's really the concern of everybody that there only be need and not greed. That the fish be harvested in its appropriate manner. It be not pursued into distant waters where it might harm its spawning, but there might be a control. It's sad today that we have to have these controls, but this is man. Man's need becomes man's greed. And it is hoped that that little fish, which is the smallest of all, but the greatest in number, might continue to be a tasty morsel for many of our population for years to come.